Number 5 on this list is the British Museum. The British Museum has a super haunted item in it that is said to be somewhat responsible for the death of hundreds of individuals. The Unlucky Mummy. Museum Crush says, not actually a mummy, but the mummy board or coffin lid of an unknown high status woman from the 21st or 22nd dynasty. The British Museum's Unlucky Mummy has earned quite the reputation for causing destruction through its ancient curse. The mysterious mummy was found at Thebes in the late 1800s and tales of its curse start soon after that. It's said that of the four young Englishmen who bought it, two died in shooting incidents and two died in poverty. A string of illnesses, accidents, and deaths following this are said to be attributed to the mummy. One of the most astonishing rumors surrounding the mummy's curse is that it caused the sinking of the Titanic with the loss of more than 1,500 lives. One of the victims on the Titanic was journalist William Thomas Steed, who was one of the first to pen articles about the mummy's curse. Survivors from the disaster recall Steed telling stories of the ominous artifact over dinner, and as the mummy's sinister reputation grew, people even began to believe that its presence on on board caused the disaster. Now I will say this, there was no actual record of the mummy being on the Titanic. I mean think about it, if it was then how could it be in the museum right now? It would be at the bottom of the ocean. So we know that it was never actually there, but that didn't stop it from cursing the boat all the same. It's believed that Steed carried this curse onto the ship and that the telling of these stories are what ultimately cursed the ship to begin with. Almost Almost as if bringing up the mummy multiple times in a row unleashed its power. For my sake, I really hope that this isn't the case though. Pretty sure I've talked about this mummy a few times before on this channel and if this is like a Beetlejuice thing, like say it so many times and then it happens, then I could be in for some trouble. Number 4 on this list is the Royal Museum's Greenwich. So apparently the Queen's house in the museum actually has a cursed piece of architecture built into it. Museum Crush says, rather a large object, the tulip staircase of the Queen's House of Royal Museums Greenwich lays claim to being the first geometric self-supporting spiral stair in Britain and is rightly regarded as one of the great features of the former royal residence. But it is also the location of the Rev R. W. Hardy's famous ghost photograph. The retired Canadian vicar and his wife visited the house in 1966 and like many people before and since happily snapped away at the elegant spiral of stairs. But it wasn't until they returned to British Columbia and developed their films that they noticed a scarily cloaked spectral figure climbing the stairs. Subsequent investigations into both stairs and photograph have thrown no further light on the unearthly mystery, although as recently as 2002 a member of staff reported seeing a ghostly figure cross a balcony of the stairway before disappearing in time-honored ghostly fashion through a wall. I guess you could argue that staircase isn't necessarily an item, but who cares? The museum is still as haunted as ever and maybe even more so. At least with other museums that have haunted or cursed items, the curse just pertains to that object. And usually if you don't touch the object or interact with it, you should be fine. Just walking around this place and especially going up or down the stairs carries a pretty heavy risk to it. Be very careful around the stairs at the Queen's house if you ever end up going. Number 3 on this list is the Thirsk Museum. Located in Yorkshire Museum. Museum, this tiny little quaint museum is the last place you would expect to see something haunted. Enter in the Busby Stoop chair. Museum Crush says, Yorkshire drunk, criminal, and coin counterfeiter Thomas Busby murdered his father-in-law and fellow counterfeiter Daniel Autie in 1702. Busby was arrested at the local inn and sentenced to death by hanging. According to legend, he laid a curse on his favorite chair at the inn, saying death would come soon to anyone who dared sit in his seat. After his execution, his remains were hung in a gibbet from a stoop at Sand Hutton Crossroads, now the location of the Busby Stoop Inn. The inn and surrounding area were said to be haunted by Busby's ghost, but one chair there in particular had developed a rather sinister reputation following a string of tragic accidents. Second World War airmen who sat in the chair were said to never return from their missions, and the chair also linked to several road accidents 
accidents and fatal illnesses. In 1978, the inn's landlord removed the chair to Thirsk Museum just a few miles down the road. The chair is now suspended high above the ground of the museum to ensure that no unassuming soul can ever fall foul of its curse again. It's been hung there, unmoved, for 40 years. I've looked into this chair further, and for a while there, it really was that if you sat in this thing, you were going to die. It wasn't going to happen in a year from now or something like that either. Like, we're talking about pretty imminent death here. Number two on this list is the Natural History Museum. The Natural History Museum is one of the most complete museums in the world, and being so complete, it obviously has to include a cursed item. Museum Crush says, this apparently cursed gem was owned by 19th century polymath Edward Heron Allen. So powerful was its curse that he eventually decided to have it stored away in a bank vault inside seven locked boxes with a note of warning to anyone who dare handle it. Heron Allen also left strict instruction not to remove the amethyst until 33 years after his death. The curious story surrounding the stone says that it was stolen from the temple of the god Indra during the Indian mutiny by Colonel W. Ferris, an officer of the Bengal cavalry. After Ferris's health deteriorated and he died, the cursed amethyst was passed on to his son, who suffered a similar bout of bad luck and eventually gave it to Heron Allen. After facing a string of health and financial misfortunes, Heron Allen made several attempts to get rid of the stone, but they all proved unsuccessful each time it returned to him. Less than a year after his death, Heron Allen's daughter donated the amethyst to the Natural History Museum, where it is on display in the vault. And finally, number one on this list is Zach Baggins Haunted Museum. The number one voted haunted place in America has got to make this list, considering it's full of cursed objects. There isn't just one object here that's cursed, there are tons. In fact, we would need our own separate video dedicated solely to this place to even begin to break down all the scary stuff that's in this museum. Just listen to this small excerpt from the website. Among the hundreds of terrifying possessions, museum goers can even peek inside the VW death van in which Dr. Jack Kevorkian ended the suffering of terminally ill patients as well as get a close-up look at the propofol chair from Michael Jackson's death room. Perhaps most unsettling is the original staircase from the Indiana Demon House, notorious for its powerful paranormal activity before being demolished in 2014. The wooden banister and creaky steps from the house now stand in a dimly lit corner, resting on a blanket of dirt from the location. Following its installation, a group of construction workers walked off the job and refused to come back. These are just a couple couple of the so-called attractions that this place has to offer. If you go to this museum, then there is a very good chance you will end up walking out with a curse attached to you. That much paranormal energy all lumped into one place, it just spells out something haunted. Be very careful if you ever intend to go here. In at number five, we have the Stagecraft. This eerie painting was an adaptation of a photograph that was taken by photographer James Kidd. The photo was taken of a wooden car, and when the picture was finally Finally developed, it shows a ghostly figure of a headless man standing on a log to the left of the wagon. The figure's coat, pants, and boots are quite plain and easy to see, but he has no head. The photograph was examined by Kodak and other experts, and it was proved that this photo was not tampered with in any way. In 1994, James Kidd displayed his photo at a gallery in Tombstone, Arizona, and painter Laura, who was also showing off her art at the gallery, saw the stagecraft photo and was very intrigued. Laura asked James if she could make an oil painting of the photo. He said she could, and she began to work on the 16 by 20 inch oil painting based on the photo. When she was about halfway through completing the painting, she began getting a strange feeling, and Laura thought to herself why she chose that photo to paint, or maybe she shouldn't have even started it, but she did finish it. After completion of the painting, some very strange and unexplainable things began to happen around her home, seemingly centered around that painting. Laura says she doesn't believe in ghosts, but she isn't able to explain how or why these strange things happened. She took the painting to hang it in the office she worked at, and three days after doing that, the office called and asked her to come pick up the ghost painting. Every morning, people claimed the painting was crooked. They would straighten it, and the next morning it would be crooked again. Also, appointments were suddenly messed up, and papers went missing. People in the office were very afraid of the painting, so Laura took it back to her house. Since she took it home, her and her husband would experience weird occurrences like knocks on the door, but no one was there. Seeing a white, hazy figure of a person, a clock which hung on the wall for over 40 years suddenly fell a 
and broke, mysterious leaks in their roof and even though it was brand new, and looked at multiple times by workers who said nothing was wrong with it. Many weird things happened not only to them but also to friends of theirs who would come over or just look at the photo. Laura claims even after all of these unexplainable experiences she still doesn't believe in ghosts but if she could go back she would never have created the painting. In at number 4 we have The Rain Woman. The Rain Woman was painted in 1996 by a Ukraine artist by the name of Svetlana Teletz. One day she began to feel as if someone was always with her and one day she had the urge to draw and she believed she captured who was watching over her. During the creation of the painting she felt that a hand was guiding her during the entire process and had finished The Rain Woman in less than 5 hours. After finishing the painting it was put on the market and was bought but then quickly bought back which occurred many times by different purchases of The Rain Woman. The first woman who bought it claimed she couldn't get any sleep and felt someone was beside her even after hiding the painting behind a cupboard. The second purchaser was a young man and he too couldn't stand to keep the painting. He brought it back to the artist without even taking his money back. The man said he kept dreaming and complained that every night there was a shadow of the woman walking around and he was extremely afraid of it. The third buyer was a male and was completely skeptical of the cursed painting but he too quickly returned it when he started to see the lady in the painting and her white eyes everywhere. He also claimed to have intense headaches while being in the room with it. It's believed that this painting is possessed by an evil spirit that has been haunting her targets and the creator since the completion of the painting. Apparently the woman infiltrates targets homes through a gallery transaction or art purchase. She takes her time to select her preferred target. She simply sits, displayed and when an appropriate target comes along they will be inexplicably drawn to the painting and compelled to purchase it. Once she is bought and brought into the home the targets start to experience sleeplessness, nightmares, general misfortune, conflict with others living in the home and the feeling of constantly being watched. It is unknown whether the painting is possessed or cursed but due to so many people experiencing similar things while owning the painting, it is known around the world as one of the most haunted paintings in the world. The painting now hangs in the Venezia Salon, Merchik's furniture on the streets of Kyiv. Customers who visit the shop today claim that you can catch the painting smiling or having a glance of anger. In at number 3 we have Crying Boy. The Crying Boy was originally created by Italian painter Giovanni Bragoli in the 1950s and has been mass produced in alternative versions over the years, all portraits of tearful young boys or girls. In addition to being widely known, certain urban legends attribute a curse to the painting. One major reason for these claims come from a fire that happened in South Yorkshire, England in 1980. The owners of the home, Ron and May Hall, lost nearly everything to the blaze except one item, a painting of the crying boy. His wide eyes looking out from the wreckage are not even blackened by the smoke. In in September of 1985, British tabloid The Sun published a story about the crying boy painting that caused fires and this story was backed up by a local fire station officer. The officer said these paintings turned up mysteriously unscathed in fires across the UK, all of which started spontaneously. After the story came out, many people got rid of the painting from their home while others shrugged off the rumours and kept them hung in their homes. These paintings were readily available in stores during the 1950s to 1970s, so many people had one. They appealed to many young couples who wanted to decorate their homes with art. The paintings bear the prominent signature of one Giovanni Brogolin, but for quite some time no one could find information on this mysterious artist and why he paints sad children. One backstory from 2000 was about the boy in the famous crying boy painting, who was said to be a street urchin named Don Bonillo, who accidentally started a fire in which his parents died in Spain. From then on, whenever the boy went, a fire followed, giving him the nickname Diablo. Many people throughout England who had owned these paintings had unfortunate events happen to them, often involving fire. The son who did the original story of the cursed painting told the public to send them their paintings and they will set fire to them and get rid of the curse and they did just that. They put out an article on Halloween in 1985 with the headline Crying Flame claiming they dissolved the curse once and for all with a bonfire, burning stacks of these paintings which were all sent in by the public. The bonfire blazed near the river Thames dissolving the curse into smoke. In at number 2 we have The Hands Resist Him. The Hands Resist Him was created by artist Bill Stoneham in 1972. It shows a young boy and a female doll standing in front of a glass panel door against which many hands are pressed. According to Bill, the boy is based on a photograph of himself at the age of 5. The doorway is a representation of the dividing line between the current world and the world of fantasy and impossibilities, while the doll is a guide that will escort the boy 
through it. The hands represent alternative lives or possibilities. This painting became the subject of an urban legend and a viral internet meme in February 2000 when it was posted for sale on eBay, along with a description implying that it was haunted. The painting was first displayed at the Fine Garten Gallery in Beverly Hills, California, and was even reviewed by an art critic at the Los Angeles Times. According to Bill, the owner of the gallery and the art critic who reviewed the painting died within one year of coming into contact with it. During the show, the painting was purchased by actor John Marley, who had a notable role in the movie The Godfather. After Marley's death, the painting was found at the site of an old brewery by an elderly California couple who kept it until auctioning it on eBay in February 2000. According to the couple, the painting carried some form of a curse. They claimed that the characters in the painting moved during the night and that they would sometimes leave the painting and another room. And the painting had made its way to that room they had just entered. The couple also included a series of photographs they had taken, said to be evidence of an incident in which the female doll character threatened the male character with the gun that she was holding, causing him to attempt to leave the painting. A disclaimer was included in the listing absolving the seller from all liability if the painting was purchased. News of the listing ran rapid through the internet, catching lots of attention, and the auction page was viewed over 30,000 times. Some people who had seen the photo of the painting claimed that it made them feel ill or have an unpleasant experience. After initial bid of $199, the painting eventually received 30 bids and sold for $1,025. The buyer of this cursed painting was the Perception Gallery in Grand Rapids, Michigan. An individual who saw the story of the Hands Resistant painting contacted Bill Stoneham in 2004 about commissioning a sequel. Bill agreed and actually went on to make three more paintings that related to the original, creating a series. On March 15, 2017, the Haunted Museum in Las Vegas announced it had acquired the prequel painting. Bill Stoneham finished the series with his final painting, What Remains, in 2021. And finally, in at number one, we have The Anguished Man. The Anguished Man is probably one of the most famous cursed paintings of all time. This oil painting is known to be the world's most haunted, not only paintings in the world, but objects next to the Annabelle doll and the Dybbuk box. This famous painting was created by an unknown artist who mixed the paint with his own blood. The artist was very troubled and soon after finishing the painting, he took his own life. The Anguished Man is currently owned by Sean Robinson from Cumbria, England. He inherited the painting from his grandmother who warned him that the painting was cursed. Despite what his grandmother said, the painting fascinated him. So he did take it, but he had to keep it in the basement of his house because his wife didn't like it. In 2010, Sean removed the painting from the basement after a flooding happened and put it in one of the bedrooms of the home. Shortly after moving the painting, Sean and his family started to experience strange happenings around the house, like seeing a shadowy figure of a man and hearing sounds of whispering and crying. The incidents kept happening, haunting each member of the family. At night time, Sean would suddenly awake to see a dark, faceless figure standing in his bedroom, and his wife discovered a stranger lying on the bed next to her, leaving her traumatized. The occurrence became dangerous when the couple's son, Keenan, felt a presence push him down the stairs. In 2011, Sean uploaded a video on YouTube titled Ghost Activity Caught on Tape, Haunted Painting, The Anguished Man, which had gained over 1 million views. The video was recorded for eight consecutive hours in the bedroom where the painting hung. The video contains footage of the door closing on its own, a loud bang and sounds of scraping can be heard. Sean continued uploading videos, posting updates about the painting and capturing further paranormal activity in the house, such as distorted sounds and a mysterious ghostly figure running past the camera. To this day, Sean still owns the cursed painting and refuses to destroy it. He keeps it in his basement to avoid any more harm to him and his family. He is currently planning on bringing his story and experiences to the big screen to make a film about the anguished man. Number five on this list is the Bassano vase. The Bassano vase is one of those old family heirlooms that you really don't want to get passed down to you. It started out as a wedding gift, also something that you really don't want to receive on your wedding day. Anyways, it's a pretty vase, so the couple accepted this vase and then tragedy struck. On the night of the wedding, after the ceremony, the bride was found dead in her room. It's said that she had her hands wrapped around this vase as she was dying and in her final breaths before passing, vowed to have her revenge. This little vow at the end muddles things because we're not sure whether it was the vow that cursed the vase or if the vase was already cursed, but whatever. Adding it to the story makes it a little bit more interesting, so she cursed the vase. Either way, at this point, nobody realized that the vase had anything to do with the death of the young bride, which is really too bad. The vase turned into a family heirloom and was passed from generation to generation. As you can imagine, it didn't go so great for those who received this. 
More people kept dying, all of them extremely mysteriously. Eventually, somebody caught on and decided that this vase needed to get locked up for good. For a time, it was locked up in a secret location and nobody knew where this vase was. It should have stayed that way, though. The vase in 1988 saw the light of day again and was sold off to a wealthy bidder who basically just bought an extremely expensive way to die. He died very soon after receiving this vase and thus it began all over again. The vase exchanged hands some more, killing off more and more people as it went. Finally, somebody with some proactive thinking gave it to the police. Now, nobody knows where it ended up. Whether the police destroyed it, hit it, or held onto it is anyone's guess. Number four on this list is the Chained Oak. This one is really interesting, and even though history hasn't necessarily hidden it from us, it's definitely tried to negate the consequences. Atlas Obscura says, The Chained Oak is an old tree wrapped in chains to prevent its branches from falling. This is due to an alleged curse put on the tree when, in 1821, the 15th Earl of Shrewsbury refused a woman's pleas for money. It's said that she then put a curse upon the nearby oak. For every branch that falls from the tree, a member of the Earl's family would die. Later that night, one of the Earl's relatives died suddenly under mysterious circumstances. Convinced that the curse was true, the Earl ordered that the branches of the oak should be chained up to prevent more from falling. I feel for that Earl's family, man. Like, literally, I'm just a grandkid of this dude, and now if this tree breaks a little bit, I'm gonna die? No thank you. At least the Earl had the sense to chain up the tree and make sure that it won't happen to harm his family. But one big storm rolls through that place and wham, now some random person is just dying. Just pray that you don't happen to be the descendant of this guy, and if you are, cross your fingers those chains were done up tight. Number three on this list is the baker's wedding dress. Marriage is supposed to be one of the happiest times of your life. Finding that partner you intend to spend the rest of your life with, and then actually doing just that. Therefore, one of the happiest days of your life should be the day that all of this becomes official your wedding day. That's why it's particularly sad when tragedy or drama occurs on the day of said wedding. Just that is exactly what happened with Anna Baker. Scoop Whoop says, Inside the Baker Mansion in Altoona, USA is the wedding dress of Anna Baker, who fell in love with an iron worker. Legends claim that Anna eloped from her home to get married to her lover, but her father forcibly brought her back and locked her in her bedroom. She then refused to marry anyone else and spent the rest of her life alone. After her death, the members of the Baker family reported spotting Anna's wedding dress at different places around the house. Some of them even saw the spirit of Anna Baker moving around the house dressed in that same wedding dress. Imagine literally getting forced back home and locked in your room by your father as you're getting married. It's no wonder that Anna was pissed and why this specific object has become very cursed. Now it's locked up in a case and hidden from the world in the Baker Mansion. It's a good thing that it is because what Scoop Whoop didn't talk about is the fact that this dress can actually be dangerous. As ridiculous as it actually sounds, it has reportedly tried to strangle people in their sleep before. I know that the image of a floating wedding dress trying to suffocate somebody is kind of humorous, but I promise you that you wouldn't be laughing if it happened to you. I like that this thing is locked up, but would be far more comfortable if we just threw it in the fire and were done with it completely. Number two on this list is the Anguished Man Painting. The Anguished Man Painting is pretty much exactly what it sounds like, a painting of a man in some very clear anguish. The thing is that this man doesn't really look all that human. He hardly has any facial features at all and almost looks a bit like a burn victim. Also, where his eyeballs should be, there's just these two gaping holes and his mouth also looks like one giant hole with no end. Even without the haunting associated with this picture, it's already pretty scary and I personally have no idea why anyone would want it in their home. That's exactly what Sean Robinson did though and he quickly suffered the consequences. Scoop Whoop says, Fascinated by the charm of the Anguished Man painting, Sean Robinson inherited the painting from his grandmother and decided to hang the painting on the wall of his house. Soon after that, Sean and his family started experiencing paranormal events like cracking of the doors in the middle of the night and sudden blood-curdling screams from nowhere. Sean's wife decided to investigate the origin of the painting and found that the artist who painted the painting killed himself and before doing that, he mixed his own blood with the paint that he used in making the painting. 
Learning this, the couple decided to hide the painting in the basement of their house in Cumbria. So, the first thing about this story that is kind of questionable is how anybody could be fascinated by the charm of this thing. It's gross, and I don't like looking at it, let alone having it hanging in my home. The second thing that's super questionable is why we decided to hide it. I swear, none of these people have ever heard of fire before, guys. Like, great, thank you for hiding it from the world. This is helpful, but what would be even more helpful is if we just took a match and burned it so nobody ever has to deal with it again. I apologize to the artist who painted this thing, but if you're gonna use your own blood and make a haunted painting, then come on, man, kinda deserves to be burned. And finally, number one on this list is the Thomas Busby chair. This chair is freaking deadly, man, and even though it's pretty much safe from public use now, I still hate that it exists. Scoop Whoop says, popularly known as Busby's stoop chair, this wooden furniture is cursed by the spirit of Thomas Busby, who was known to ruthlessly murder people. Before getting hanged for his crimes, he requested to have a meal in his favorite local pub. Upon finishing his meal, he stood and said, may sudden death come to anyone who dare sit on my chair. And ever since then, 63 people who dared to sit on the chair met untimely and terrifying deaths. Later, the owner of the pub donated the chair to the Thursk Museum UK, and it's still there, hung one and a half meters off the ground to prevent any further deaths. Can you imagine owning that pub and being like, oh, no worries, 60 people have died in this chair, all is good. Like, how the heck did we allow 63 separate people to sit in this chair and die? And okay, like, I'm happy that it's hanging one and a half meters off the ground and nobody can sit in it, but guys, come on. This is literally a dangerous weapon that we have right here. The fact that this thing hasn't been totally dismantled is kind of ridiculous. What happens if somebody steals this chair and then decides, you know what, I'm gonna murder people with it without anybody finding out? Frankly, I think history should have hidden this thing a little bit better. Hopefully we don't hear any more murderous stories about it from here on out.